Now, whichever way you slice it, things are completely and utterly a little bit different with America's top 10. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to streets. Streets are the bread and butter of our communities. Not literally, that would be disgusting. Streets are where we as humans first experience independence, where we each rode our BMXs until sundown, at least that's what I did in the 80s. But after leaving Britain for America 14 years ago, I realised that streets on either side of the pond are very different. Not only does this apply to the houses on the streets, something I covered in a previous video, but the streets themselves. Now there are various definitions of the word word street, but for the purposes of this video, I'll be defining street as a road that is continuously flanked by buildings, usually residential. And so without further ado, here are four ways that British and American streets are very different. Instinctively, I always thought that American streets were probably longer than their British counterparts. And it's easy to make this assumption for a reason that we'll get to later in this list. But now that I've lived in the US for a while, it's difficult to say whether the average American street is longer than the average British street. In fact, it was quite hard to find any reliable data on this on the internet. And so whenever that happens on my channel, I do what Billy Joel does. I go to extremes. What do I mean by that? Well, we can take a look at some of the most extreme cases of street length in both Britain and America. Now, this isn't easy to do either because people have different definitions on what constitutes the longest continuous residential street. My definition of a street that I outlined at the beginning of this video rules out the near 300 mile Watling Street in the UK since this otherwise impressive old Roman road isn't continuously flanked by buildings. And so by this definition, the longest continuous residential street in the UK is reportedly King Street in Aberdeen, Scotland, which measures in at just over two miles in length. In the US, there are several streets that have laid claim to the longest. Chief among these is Colfax Avenue in Colorado. But as with Watling Street, it isn't continuously flanked by buildings. And so after that, it is sort of hard to determine which is America's longest continuous street. So I'll just give you an example that's local to me. Western Avenue, right here in Chicago, runs from the north of the city to the south at a total length of just over 27 miles. So when it comes to extreme cases of long streets, America certainly wins. And the following might be a good reason for that. In the past on this channel, I've talked about how the layout of British cities is long and winding and how American streets are straight, organized and rectangular. But this is just a generalization and often there are city plans that can buck the trend. In the UK, streets of the post-industrial revolution do tend to be better organized and, dare I say it, block-like due to better planning. But in ancient British times, less consideration was given to functional navigation and fire safety. Also, old British roads were often built on existing trade routes and their bendiness is a result of having to circumvent obstacles in the days before advanced machinery. In the US, as I've mentioned before, many cities operate on a grid system, meaning that streets are stacked next to one another in rectangular blocks, hence the term blocks. One of the earliest examples of this in the United States occurred in Philadelphia. But don't take my word for it, instead listen to me from six months ago. In 1682 the city was planned and developed by the English Quaker William Penn, who also founded the entire Pennsylvania colony and for whose father the state was named. He decided to make Philadelphia one of the first American cities to operate on a grid system, for the very reason that he frowned upon the disorderly layout of his home city of London. I suppose I owe him a debt of gratitude because even despite the 100 degree temperatures, Philadelphia was easily one of the most navigable cities I've had the pleasure of traversing on foot. Now, not only does America's grid system lend itself to potentially longer streets, but also to bigger house numbers. And you might be thinking, ooh, Captain Obvious. If America has longer streets, of course its house numbers go higher. But much to my own surprise, street length actually has little to do with the fact that American addresses sometimes go into the four or five digits. Let's take a look at why that is. 
Back in the UK, we're often flabbergasted by the fact that Americans might live at an address in, say, the 6,000s. And that's because in the UK, it's actually quite rare for house numbers to be anything more than three digits. Why is that? Well, it's because our numbering system goes like this. On any given street, the street numbering will usually start at the number one. And the numbers move up sequentially, with the odd numbers on one side of the street and the even numbers on the other. And so if a street has fewer than a thousand houses, as is often the case, a four-digit address won't exist. When such addresses do occur in the UK, they really stand out. Reportedly, the highest numbered address in the UK is 2679. In the US, an address number of that size, or even way higher, can be found almost everywhere to the extent that I've personally lived at five different American addresses with a number higher than that. So why are US house numbers so big? Well, in America, house numbers on a given street don't usually start at one. What often happens in an American city is that you have a zero point, which is the city center. And for every mile that you get away from that zero point, a thousand is added to the surrounding addresses. So for example, if you live say four miles away from the city center, there's a good chance that your address will be in the four thousands. Now this isn't the case everywhere, but in general, that's how things are done. That's why some of the big skyscrapers in the city centre have an address number that's lower than a thousand, because they're right there in and around the zero point. But so much for numbering conventions, what about naming conventions? In other words, are there any striking differences between how Britain and America name their streets? <laughs> And the short answer is yes. You know, when I first moved to the US, there was something I couldn't quite put my finger on that struck me as unusual about all of the street names that I was encountering. And it was only recently after I sat down with a list of the most popular street names in either country that I realized some of the major differences in how our two countries name their streets. So to give us an understanding of what these differences are, I looked up the 10 most commonly named street names in both Britain and America. And what I found next was truly shocking for people that are easily moved by words. In Britain, the 10 most commonly found street names are Manor Road, Green Lane, Victoria Road, London Road, Church Street, Church Road, Park Road, Main Street, Station Road, and High Street. So with churches, manors, and stations, we apparently like to name streets after types of buildings. In Victoria Road, we have evidence that Britain also likes to name its streets after famous British historical figures. But to me, none of those are the biggest revelation on this list. That is reserved for entry number one, but more specifically, entry number three. You see, it's often observed that Brits say High Street and Americans say Main Street to describe a city's primary business street. And of course, these names are also loosely considered to be each country's most commonly named streets. And sure enough, as you can see in the UK, High Street wins the gold medal. What I was surprised to see was a respectable bronze around the neck of Main Street. These are all Olympic metaphors. Now, whichever way you slice it, things are completely and utterly a little bit different with America's top 10. In 10th is 7th. Are you confused? Well, due to the American grid system, an awful lot of American streets are not just named, they're numbered. Next is Oak, then 6th, then Main, down in 7th place, then 5th, then Park, 4th, 1st, 3rd, and second. And the first thing that stood out to me about this top 10 is that first is third, third is second, and second is first. And as a lot of my followers on Twitter rightly pointed out, first is not first because first sometimes goes by the name of Maine. I'm glad I gave up drinking. So that's it, we've solved it. The chief difference is Britain likes to name its streets after historic royals, buildings, and green spaces, and America after an elite group of integers. But what if we took away America's numbered streets? What would its top 10 be made of then? Well, the answer is Lake, Washington, View, Elm, Cedar, Maple, Pine, Oak, Maine in at number two, and Park. So in this case, just like with Britain, we have a historical figure in the name of Washington, backing up my observation that a lot of streets in this country are in fact named for US presidents. But the big revelation to somebody that's never spent a day in America is that America really likes to name its streets after trees. And I can only think that's because the word street includes the word tree. 
or because trees are everywhere. That's it for this episode. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever lived at any one of these street names. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can have these kind of discussions with me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. Finally, an American house number sized shout out to my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to support Lost in the Pond, you can do so today at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until the next video, goodbye.